This podcast is sponsored by Murgatroyd, intellectual property attorneys. For more information on today's guest and our company, visit murgatroyd.com forward slash podcasts. Welcome to the third season of Murgatroyd's Innovation Talks podcasts. We're delighted you've joined us. If you have any questions, please get in touch by email at innovation.talks at murgatroyd.com or via at murgatroyd on Twitter. Don't forget to subscribe to make sure you don't miss any future episodes. So let's go straight into today's podcast. Hello, I'm Catherine Bonner, Director Patents from the Murgatroyd Southampton office and I'm here today in our Glasgow office with Eleanor Coates. Hi there. Really good to see you today and we're going to discuss an important topic today. Really excited to be talking about what are the key steps that you can take to identify the intellectual property in your business. I'm sure, Eleanor, you've come across this situation many times with your trademark um, experience and your clients. Yes, there always seems to be more IP in a business than perhaps clients are initially aware of. Not only will they have their trademarks behind of their products, which will be the most obvious that they will be aware of, they will also have their, their trading name, their company name. They may have a logo, which they are also using. They may have other types of trademarks. You can have uh, trademarks in colour combinations, for example. Also could have packaging for their products, which could be looked at and protected. And there will be unregistered rights arising in these as well. In addition to trademarks, they could have unregistered design rights, either again through their product or packaging, or potentially there will be copyright arising in their web pages and other aspects. If they have more technical products, however, it could be possible that patents will be there. Yes, and of course, the rights that you've just mentioned would be dynamic and changing every time a new product is issued or a new variant that could result in a new evolution of the packaging. Um, And again, the whole same set of IP rights arising in that new variation. That is correct, because I mean, Generally, we find that a logo mark, for example, might have a shelf life of perhaps seven years before it is tweaked. And in fact, you know, many of my clients produce products out into the marketplace seasonally. So perhaps they will have new drinks coming out in the autumn or winter markets, and then they will have a new summer range. So you can actually be looking at your IP continually to assess what rights are arising. Yes, I have this with a a very tech and a logically driven client of mine that tends seasonal trade shows. So they have three of these very important trade shows a year. And I, I make sure that we meet ahead of the trade show just to review the intellectual property that might be coming out or displayed for the first time at that trade show. These also, as well as the rights that you've identified there, Elena, I'm often looking for innovations in the way something works, a technological advantage, which we might be looking to protect with a patent application, or perhaps if it's about the look and the feel and the overall character, then with a registered design. (laughs) You are so right that this IP arises continually within the business. And very often people are not aware there's something new that could be protected. There's a lot more there than meets the eye. And that's right. And it is particularly important that you protect it before you sort of put it out onto the marketplace or at least have awareness of what you could protect. Because it really is identifying it at that early stage is when you'll be able to secure your best and strongest rights by seeking registration of them. Yeah, seeking advice ahead of time rather than trying to deal with... um, yeah, sticky situations afterwards, seeking advice is our message. And certainly trade shows are where you actually get a lot of issues arising because you're putting your products on display and your competitors are there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I think if you have those rights secured before you go to the trade show, I'm aware a number of these bodies have someone there at the trade show ready to enforce your rights if you've got them remove something from a competitor stand if it is indeed infringing your rights. But in order to even start having that conversation, you've got to have put something in place before going to the trade show. It can be very distressing to be there unprepared and without your rights. And I'm very happy to take a phone call during that trade show scenario, but it's always far better if someone's got some rights ahead of time. And also the same goes for trademarks. If you're actually going to launch a product, you really don't want to put that product out onto the marketplace under a name unless you've checked to see that it's not going to infringe a third party's right. So really undertaking that initial step 
quite early on in the creation process to think about what rights might arise, will they infringe third parties, as well as can you secure your own rights in those? <laughs> Am I going to be standing at my stand for the duration of the trade show or are we going home after day one? Yeah, absolutely. Let's let's make sure you're, you're there for the, for the long haul. Um, in those situations, call for an assessment of the intellectual property rights of the business or the product at a certain event in time, a trade show or a new release. I think it's also important to try to capture the intellectual property rights in a business at an earlier stage or at an audit type opportunity. There is funding available for intellectual property IP audits. But I would argue, I think, that even if funding is not available, that it would stand a business in good stead to have a look at what it's got and to set out its IP rights in some sort of IP audit? Well, certainly the IP audit that's offered by the UK IPO, I mean, in some respects, it replicates what we often do with smaller clients or our clients that come to us with their portfolio. In any event, we will always sit down with a client and go through what they have, what they could do, what they should do, and what their options are. I think an IP audit is incredibly useful. It says what you have got, where you are now. And even better if you're doing that in a proactive way rather than in a reactive way because you've seen something or you have a concern about something in the marketplace. IP audits cover all intellectual property rights, registered, unregistered. So that would go through the full gambit of trade secrets, patents, patent applications, registered designs, then unregistered designs. And of course, in your field, Eleanor, you'd include the trademarks, the logos, packaging, having a look to see what rights really arise through any of their products or marketing. Yeah, I conducted an IP audit recently for a packaging company and they thought they just had a couple of trademarks and they had so much more than a couple of trademarks. And then we also got onto talking about a potential new product launch, a very beautifully designed product that actually we think we might be able to file some patent applications around as well as some registered designs. And I'm going to check back with them later this month to see where they are with that. And it was a really exciting audit to do because they were at such a great place to capture everything they had. So yeah. And it's only really by knowing what rights they have that they can focus what funds to acquire those rights. Yeah, absolutely. And to put the, to make sensible decisions about the, the way forward to go. So really, yes, seeking advice. That's our yeah. message. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Alan. It's been really interesting to talk to you about that today. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for your time today. We hope you found today's podcast valuable. And don't forget to subscribe to make sure you don't miss any of our future episodes. So until the next time, goodbye. <laughs>